I'm Jake, you're watching Gas Guzzlers, and this is the most confusingly named vehicle of all time, the 2023 Land Rover Range Rover. All right, folks, let's get into it. All right, guys, let's talk about the exterior of this 2023 Land Rover Range Rover. First of all, model designation, big letters across the front of the vehicle, Range Rover, so everyone knows you bought the cream of the crop, except you didn't buy the cream of the crop of the cream of the crop because you didn't get the autobiography edition or the SV model. You just got one of the lesser Range Rover, so you don't get the fancy five bar grill that those higher end models get. But you know what you are getting? You're getting the classic Range Rover front end design. I feel like they haven't changed this in a while because hey, if something's well executed, why change it? Overall, pretty good looking vehicle. You do have these nickel accents. That's part of the nickel uh, appearance package. We'll talk about that at the side, but if you want, you can get this blacked out. Now, let me talk to you about the headlights. Of course, this has LED DRL super special headlights, but for $550, you can upgrade to Pixel LED headlights. Now, what are those? They might be one of the coolest features rolling out in new cars. Pixel LED headlights can dim individual parts of the light beam. So for example, if the vehicle detects a vehicle driving in front of you, it can direct the beam to the sides of the car in front of you so that your lights do not bounce off their driver's mirror and blind the driver in the car in front of you. That is absolutely incredible technology for $550. Hey, if you're spending hundred grand, that's an option you should be going for. All right, everyone, let's take a look at the side of the new Land Rover Range Rover. First of all, name me a side profile that's more iconic than this vehicle. Maybe the 911? I don't know. What do you think is as iconic? Let me know in the comments below. Now, let's talk about some cool things about the side of this car, but actually, let's start with what you didn't option out when you purchased this Range Rover. Whoever optioned this one out did not get the $4,000 deployable side steps, which actually I probably would recommend if you're an older person because it's very difficult to get into this vehicle. It is very high up. Now this vehicle does come optioned out with the $3,800 wheels. That's where you spent your four grand on the wheels, not on the running board. Those are 23 inches. You have this 1950 Charnate Gray. I have no idea how to say that, but let's talk paint real quick. You can pay $1,000 to get a two-tone roof. I would absolutely do that. I think Range Rovers with two-tone roofs look absolutely sick. All right, this vehicle right here, you might notice it's a rather long boy. That's because this is the first all-new seven-seater Range Rover and it is the long wheelbase. So your door back here is extra ginormous if I can find out how to open it. By the way, opening things on this car is way, way too hard. I've seen lots of cars with electronic pop-in, pop-out door handles. None have been as inconsistent and strange as the ones on this vehicle. Uh, not a fan of that. By the way, the doors are soft closed, so you kind of only have to close them like halfway and the car pulls them in gracefully and completes the process for you. You have this nickel plating around the side of the vehicle. You can get that blacked out for $1,000 with a blackout package. You also, on this vehicle, have the blacked out brake calipers. That's a $550 option. Overall, there's a lot going on here, but it's a good looking car. All right, guys, let's jump to the back. Starting at the rear of the car, I wanna mention something rather unfortunate. This, this car, it's not well. It has um, flatulence issues. Uh, yes, this vehicle has air suspension, and there's a very unfortunate phenomenon where a rush of air leaves it in an ungraceful manner, shall we say, and it sounds like the car had a bit of an accident, uh, not the normal kind of car accident. So, little awkward. Um, I'll see if I can capture it on camera. It seems to happen kind of in intermittently and randomly. But with that, let's talk about some of the more interesting and useful features of this car. First of all, you can get a tow hitch for 750 bucks. For $450, you can get that really cool feature that some vehicles have where they'll automatically back up the trailer. You know, they just give you a knob and the vehicle will automatically do all the math to figure out how to park your trailer. That is a really cool feature and very helpful um, from what I understand from people who tow trailers. Let's open up the power lift gate here. It's a split clamshell that's a very common classic Range Rover feature drop it down just like this now what's the big benefit of this it's gonna let you 
tailgate. Now, the Ford F-150 Lightning is the ultimate tailgate machine, but Range Rover has put in their attempt as well. Now, you can actually set up your own seats in the back here. Here's how you do it. There's a cubby right here. Pull that up. Now, you pull out this and you pull out this. All right, now you can see where this is going, huh? You put the cubby back down, you close it, okay? Then you pull on the other side of it and you have to pull really hard. It feels like you're gonna break something, but you're not, I, pro I promise, I promise, okay? You pull really hard, then that comes up and then you kinda take, take these things and they, they kinda go on like that. That's not how it fully finishes, but this is basically what it looks like. And then you can sit here comfortably and you can enjoy your kid's soccer game. You're actually, no, you're in a Range Rover. You're not going to a soccer game. You're going to your, your son's horse riding championship in this thing. Now let's talk storage. 8.7 cubic feet with that third row up. You put that third row down, you're gonna have 43.1 cubic feet. Put the second row down, you're gonna have 92.9 cubic feet. Absolutely massive. All the seats can be controlled from back here. You do have, I'm gonna use the tailgate right here, these little buttons right here, and you can use these, you can see, to fold your seats. And you can also fold up the, you know, third row and all that from back here. Pretty useful feature. Um, I will say, the seat controls, the mechanized seat controls on this vehicle, kind of suck. Uh, they never do exactly what I expect them to do. The ones back here largely work how I expect them to, but you know, that that varies. Uh, there is also a button here to change the air suspension when the vehicle's on. You can, of course, lower it. Uh, you can lower the rear. That's going to make it easier to take things out of the vehicle and load things in. Overall, pretty nice design back here. Uh, it would be nice to see just like a more coherent power seat system. Um, other than that, Pretty good job. So I mentioned that air suspension. We can push this button and you can see the vehicle raises up pretty high and pretty quick. That is a super useful feature, but the coolest part, well, the funniest part, let me take my microphone off so you can hear, is of course this vehicle's embarrassing problem. Childish, perhaps. Funny, I think so. And now you all join me at the pinnacle of luxury. Well, not the pinnacle, you ain't get the SV, but uh, yeah, yeah, almost the pinnacle of luxury in our Range Rover interior. Jokes aside, even though it's not the top, top model, it's really darn nice. First thing I noticed when I got in this vehicle, the seats are extremely supportive and very comfortable. They feel just perfect. They're a perfect mix of softness and firmness. I'm filming this at the end of 2022. This is probably my favorite seat of a vehicle I've sat in this year. They're 20 way adjustable. You can upgrade to 24 way adjustable and they're just really, really well crafted seats. They also have really the Windsor leather, I think, I believe it is called uh, in this color. It feels very nice. And there's also something really interesting that Range Rover does is you can do interior themes, which change not just like the leather color of the vehicle, but also some of the plastics and they create like a cohesive kind of theme within the vehicle. Lincoln also does their interior colors in the same way. And I think it's a really smart way of doing things. Um, it just gives a really nice, more cohesive feel, more unique, personalized feel to the vehicle. Now, you want a stat that's gonna blow your mind? I want you to tell me how many speakers you think this car has. I don't care if you're in a library right now, say it out loud, say a number out loud. How many speakers do you think this car has? 38, up to 38 speakers is the maximum amount of speakers you can get in this car. I was blown away when I heard the Lincoln was doing like 26 speakers in a car, but they're doing 38 in here. What do you do with that many speakers? All right, everyone, let's talk off-road tools right here. You can hit this home button and you see 4x4i right here. That is where you're gonna find most of your key off-road information in this vehicle. This is a pretty standard off-road menu. You can see where the wheels are positioned. In addition, it's gonna show you the tilt and angle of the vehicle. That's a really useful feature that you see in a lot of off-roaders now. My favorite feature of this vehicle has to be the wade sensing. If you click there, it's gonna show you the height of the water against the vehicle to make sure that you don't go too far under and drown out the engine or anything. That is a really cool feature that as far as I know is pretty unique. Not too many off-roaders have this. Then there is your configurable terrain mode right here. So you hit this button and it's gonna allow you to choose 
For example, what are the differentials going to do when you engage this mode? It's going to let you choose what is the powertrain going to do, the steering going to do, the traction, ride control, etc. And that, can, your custom mode, once you set it up, can be selected with this dial right here. By the way, super cool feature, this dial like sinks. It sinks into the vehicle and then it comes out when you need it. That is really cool. Let's get back to looking at the center right here because there was just one last thing I wanted to show you. So you can set up your configurable drive mode right there. But let's say that you're just driving along. You don't want to set up a custom mode. Go to this dynamic eye menu right here. Boom. You can set up dynamic or comfort for your engine, steering, gear shift, and suspension, and my favorite meter of all, the G meter. That is pretty cool. You also have a pedal graph, so it's gonna show you when you are using the brake and when you're using the throttle. That is something you usually see in high performance vehicles. I really like that. Even lap times, that is a really cool feature. I'm a big fan of the way Land Rover has done this performance eye system, as well as this dynamic this dynamic eye system and this 4x4 eye system these are two really cool menus let's take a look at your gauge cluster just like the center display extremely nice screen very very crisp right here this is going to show basically on the left the information that the vehicle thinks is important it, that could be off-roading information if you're in an off-roading menu it could be showing where your wheels are it could be showing um, any type of information like that right now it has the driver assistance screen up on the right you have your trip summary pretty standard affair and the middle your speedometer and it's very nicely will show the speed limit as well and your gas this screen, excellent, very well executed. You all know I love a good heads up display and the Range Rover Land Rover has exactly that. You take a look right there, you'll see the speed limit, the speedo, and your driver assistance features and the gear of the vehicles and displayed clearly right in front of you. That's part of the $2,000 technology package and I highly recommend it. Quick note on that center display, while the screen is very nice, the buttons you use to control it aren't. These feel really crappy. I don't know if you can hear this. Uh, let me get my mic close to it. It just does not feel nice when you press it. Uh, yeah, I don't like it one bit. It does not feel like a premium experience. Also, while we're talking about why the steering wheel makes me angry, guess, guess how heated this is. On a scale of zero to, to one, it's not heated at all. There is no heating in this steering wheel that is ridiculous. For a over $100,000 self-proclaimed SUV, a luxury SUV, to not have, to not have a heated steering wheel, but my $20,000 Jeep Cherokee has a heated steering wheel. I, I think all Jeep Cherokee, a lot of Jeep Cherokees come with steering wheels and they're a fifth of the price of this thing. That, that is an unacceptable corner cut. $300? Uh-uh-uh, I'm not paying that. Also part of that 2K tech package, you get a magic mirror. Right now you see us, hello, hello, but you just pull this button and it's using a camera in the top antenna fin and it is gonna feed you a live feed right there. So if the back of the vehicle's all clogged up, that's really useful. That way, if your rear window's blocked, you can still see what's behind you. All right, everyone, let's take a look at your camera system. You can access it right here, and this vehicle has that super cool drone mode where you can basically zoom around the vehicle and see all different angles of it, so you can actually just kind of drive like a video game. That is a really cool feature. You can also activate an off-road camera where it's gonna show you the features out around in front of you. It's gonna show you your wheels so you can maneuver around rocks. That is a really neat feature. A quick note on interior quality. I was actually really impressed with this point of the Range Rover. Now, you may have heard, you know, there's some kind of rumors, mumblings out there of, you know, Range Rovers having some quality issues and whatnot. Um, but I'm, I'm confident those days are behind them after seeing in this vehicle. Everything does feel very well put together and very sturdy. Where I really felt that was here in the door, which is extra important because this is a moving part and it's extra, it's a high touch area, right? Your pool right here feels extra firm and sturdy, no flex in it at all. Your handle right here is dampened and nice and smooth and elegant absolutely wonderful job. The metal, the wood, the leather, they all feel very high quality. They're all stitched and bolted in really well. 
excellent job. Um, by the way, while we're at the door panel, I'll just mention that right here, you do have your seat controls, three memory settings right there, of course, and you have metal window switches, which look very nice. I do wonder if it's a hot summer day, if the kind of metal switches would become uncomfortably hot, but that's a pretty minor concern. Overall, very nice interior build quality on this vehicle. Now you join me in the rear of the Land Rover Range Rover, and it is a wonderful place to be. Sitting here in the seven-seater, you have plenty of legroom. It is a massive, long wheelbase vehicle, so you shouldn't be running out of room. Let's open up your center cubbies right here. Let's see what they have in store. And you have a little storage spot that you can open up right here. And you also have cup holders that will pop out. Very nice feature. Now, looking up here, you can see you have a massive sunroof, but here's the thing, you can control that from your door panel. So both the passengers can open up the big panoramic sunroof. You know what else they can do? You can control the other passenger's window. So I can see this becoming a major issue. If you have two kids, they're gonna be brats rolling each other's windows up and down, which is kind of funny. You also have powered peasant blockers. Let me see if I can get mine to come up here. So a double tap on the window button is gonna bring up your powered peasant blocker. That is a really neat feature that really, you know, you normally see in like an S-Class Mercedes or something like that. Down here in the middle, you do of course have controls for your heated seats. You have your own uh, uh, climate controls here. You can get the four climate control zones. And then down here, you do have a full-size power outlet. That is part of the $2,000 technology package. And again, you have three memory seating positions back here. You have memory seats in the back. This is the first vehicle I have been in that had that feature. That is a really cool luxury touch. Now, I did mention that this vehicle is a seven seater, which is new for the Range Rover. Let's take a look at how that works. So now let's get into the rear of our Range Rover. There's two sets of buttons here. Bottom one is going to control the second row seats. Top one's going to control the third row seats. What you're going to do to get access to the third row is hold this forward facing button on the second row. It's gonna make the second row go all the way forward and give you as much room as possible to get in. Then we're gonna put up the third row by pulling these switches right here, or excuse me, pushing those switches, and then they will begin to fold up and you will get access to your third row. And then we can climb in. So here we go. Let's see how ridiculous you look getting in. I feel like you don't actually look terribly ridiculous. So now, why don't we see what happens after you become imprisoned back here? Actually, you know what? Oh wait, it's crushed, okay. Uh, you know what, I was about to say it's really good, but then the seat moved back. I think if whoever was in the second row liked you a lot and was willing to move forward a few extra inches, you could fit two adults back here for an hour and a half, I would say. Now let's get under the hood of the Range Rover. It's very easy to open up. It's on a gas truck. Once you open up, you're gonna find a three liter inline six twin turbo engine that's connected to an eight speed transmission, driving all four wheels, making 395 horsepower, 406 pound feet of torque. Now you can expect 18 to the city and 26 highway. You want more gas mileage? There's a plug-in hybrid that is available that's gonna give you 48 miles of all electric range and it can use 50 kilowatt DC fast charging to charge up to 80% in under an hour. Is that not good enough for you? An all electric Range Rover is coming in 2024, so just hold out a little bit longer. So that's a walk around of the vehicle. What do you all say we take this Range Rover out for a test drive? So we wanted to film in this field. It's just a nice place we thought to film the vehicle, but that meant we had to go over this curb to get into the field. And now we gotta drive over the curb to get out. But you don't wanna scratch your nice shower and gray paint. So what do you do? Ah, well, you use your air suspension. You simply go hit a button, right? And now you pick the height you want. We're gonna hit off road right there and the vehicle will move to an off-road height. So it's gonna start to raise the vehicle. You can actually feel it. I'm in the vehicle right now and you can feel it go up, back and forth and start to rise. And with that, our height has been reached. So now we can go safely over this curb and be sure that we are not gonna scratch our beautiful paint. Just like that, we are off. And we are on the road and we're going for a test drive in the all new 2023 Land Rover Range Rover.
I did want to also mention this vehicle does have massaging seats. You go to the massage function right here. It's actually a very powerful massage. You can really feel it push into your body. Um, even on three, you know, it goes up to five. It's very powerful. And you have all these combinations of massage type and direction. It's a very, very impressive massage system. A lot of vehicles just inflate a few airbags. This feels like it's really actually mechanically pushing into you. It really feels like a proper massage. So props there. Now driving on some smaller roads, you can definitely tell that this is a larger vehicle. You do have to be cognizant of where the lanes are and you just gotta, you know, it's not difficult to drive. It's not, it's not tough. Um, as someone who's usually driving smaller cars in this one, but it definitely takes just a quick second to adjust. The first thing that stuck out to me in this vehicle when it comes to the driving experience was the excellent suspension. You can definitely tell you're very dampened. You, the bumps all are smoothed out very nicely. Even the roughest potholes, you know, you still feel them, but it's, it's very much reduced. Now, as I'm coming up on a stoplight here, I'm gonna tell you the one thing I don't like about this driving experience, that is the brake pedal actuation. It is far too mushy in my opinion. The top about quarter, you have no real feel of what the vehicle is doing. It's only until you get about three quarters in that you really start to get some brake actuation there. Um, until you hit that about three quarter point, you're only really lightly gripping and it kind of aggressively ramps up as you get about three quarters in. So I really don't like that but I'm thinking maybe it's something you'll get used to as you drive this vehicle. All right, everyone, time to do some highway driving. We're gonna see how this thing accelerates. Here we go. And you know what? No drama, very little noise, just smooth power pushing forward. It's not, it, it's not, throw, it's not throwing in your seat. That's not what this is designed to do. It's just smooth clean, quiet power that whisks you down the highway. So that is, it's actually really just a unique feeling that you don't feel it too much anymore, right? Either everyone's going cool into sport, loud, fast, or it's just an anemic engine. This is kind of in a sweet spot, right? It's got that 395 horsepower. As I was saying, it's just enough for his vehicle as you pull onto the highway, it's just a smooth band of torque. Now, as I'm driving along, you know, it's very easy to keep in a highway lane. It's a little difficult sometimes to keep in some of those smaller lanes. Once you're on the highway, easy peasy. Speaking of easy peasy highway driving, why don't we try some of the self-driving features on this vehicle? How are you gonna do that? Well, first of all, you tap a little lane button on your steering wheel, and the next thing you're gonna do is set your cruise control. Once you've done that, it will tell you that driver control is on and it's gonna ask you to keep your hands on the wheel. And actually, well, the car in front of us just took a pretty aggressive stop and so we just stopped pretty aggressively. The car is using a radar system to dynamically adjust how, how far we are from the car in front of us and then it is using the um, cameras and a variety of sensors to keep us centered in our lane and it will follow the curve of the road. Now in my heads up display right here, it is showing me the speed limit of the road I'm on as well as my speed and it is also telling me that it can see the lane markings, it's telling me it can see the car in front of us and that everything is good to go for this driver assistance system. So really, um, you're, you, you can't take your hands off. This is a hands-on driving experience, but uh, it will take the turns for you. I've also noticed it does a pretty good job with situations that tend to confuse um, automated driving systems. For example, when lanes start to split, that does tend to confuse many systems I have found. It does not confuse this one. This one tends to understand what's going on. It does a pretty good job of staying centered right in the lane, and it also does a pretty good job of smoothing out its um, speed changes to match the car in front of you. Now, if you take your hands off for too long, as I just did, watch, we're taking this turn right now, my hands are on the wheel, incredible. If you take your hands off for too long, it's gonna show you a red steering wheel icon in the heads up display, and it's gonna show you a red steering wheel in your main gauge cluster, and it will yell at you, it will say you are being a bad Land Rover driver for not driving properly. The technology these days is absolutely crazy. I'm still amazed every time I get in a car, and I should be, I'm, yeah, this is standard on so many vehicles now, I've done it so many times, but there's still just something so cool about watching the steering wheel turn and the car just say, I've got it from here. This car, I'm not gonna say its name because then I'll set off all the voice assistant stuff, but 
what do I think of it? Look, it, it has some very nice features, right? That air suspension, it has that kind of fun uh, clamshell design, which lets you have a fun tailgate, right? It's got the nice heads up display, stuff like that. It's, it's an interesting vehicle. It's nice, it's well-built, it's large. It's a good seven-seater luxury SUV that drives well, minus the braking issue. But would I recommend it to family member or friend or to you all? That becomes difficult, and here's why. This vehicle lacks a lot of features or charges for a lot of features that I don't think it should. This vehicle is $115,000, and it lacks a heated steering wheel. It lacks rear cross traffic alert. These are all things that you can find in a low level Toyota Camry, or a, actually any Toyota you can find rear cross traffic alert in and many other much, much cheaper vehicles have many of these systems. Even the more advanced systems in this vehicle, that camera mirror that we can flip on right there, guess what? A lot of General Motors vehicles for half this vehicle's price have that. And the build quality is nice, yeah, but you know what? The build quality of BMWs that are half or three quarters the price of this are also very nice. It just becomes difficult for me to recommend someone this vehicle when it lacks those features. However, there is a group of people who I would recommend this to, and that's those who don't care about the camera mirror because they just don't want that high tech stuff. Maybe want a bit more of an old fashioned vehicle. Someone who needs that easier to use infotainment system. Someone who will like camping out in the back, but you know, they're not gonna need the most advanced safety self-driving suite available. Older people, they are gonna probably really like this vehicle. So that's kind of where I stand. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, be sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in next week's video.